You know, one thing I love, I gotta admit it, you know, it makes me feel like that I'm the guy, is when I can take something that somebody's really like hacked up, screwed up, and I can save it and fix it and do it, you know, in a cost effective way. This last video that we did on a six, seven, fourth generation Cummins, some people tried to drill out some rusted uh, pan bolts on the pan rail around the bottom of the block and totally hacked it up. The video we did, we did a great repair on it. We doubled, Healy coiled the holes. You'll see if you watch the last video, beautiful job. I'm super happy about it. You know, some people said, you know, just the, the hole that was elongated. Some people suggested that we TIG weld it up. First off, bad idea. Anybody that welds cast iron knows you don't just TIG weld a little spot on a block. Now we're gonna go and uh, do all the machine work on the block and get it prepped. Uh, it's gonna be a nice build. So we'll align hone it. We'll bore the block, then hone the cylinder walls, deck it, uh, square it all up, and uh, check all our surface textures, get this thing cleaned up and ready for a build. Okay, so now that we've, uh, we've stroked this and, and lined honed it, you can see our surface area here. And what we have, what, what is most important to me is we have a perfectly straight a center line right through the crank there. So when we put a crank in this thing, it'll turn like butter. Consistent oil clearance across every main, so then each rod is getting the same pressure right through the crank. Yeah, each one of the mains is the exact same size. Yeah. Basically, I'm just checking and make sure that my setup's good. Facing it off the pan rail, these are perfectly level to the machine, and the pan rail is machined in line with the main center line. So that's why we'll locate off that so that we know our bores are getting bored straight to the center line of the mains. So then I'll check how different the deck surface is. It's a little low right here, highest spot of 4 thousandths, which isn't too bad. It should resurface pretty quickly. So now we'll get it probed for all the cylinder locations and we'll start to bore the cylinders. This cylinder looks like it had some damage, so we'll... Yeah, this is that one that, uh, oh, this ain't that one that melted, a, one of these melted I a piss. think it did, I think this one had a drop valve seat and the piston looked all banged oh, up. Oh yeah, it was terrible. But the wall actually doesn't look too bad. It looks like it should clean up. So is this standard, you're just gonna go 20? Um, I'm gonna double check it, but it should be standard, yeah. Yeah, okay. We've align honed the block. Now we're gonna do all the top end work. So you're gonna deck the block, bore it, chamfer it. Yep. And then uh, we'll send it over for final honing. Yep. And uh, that's all we're doing on this. This block will be uh, ready for final wash and clean after that, right? Yep. Bore the cylinders out, what, about 18 thou and then uh, 2 thou uh, to hone? I'll do 15 and then I'll leave myself 5 for five, the 5 to hone. So if you look here on the block, he's already put some, he's, he's probed the top of it and he's marked the distance that the block is kind of like... Yep, it's just, it just looks like it's mainly low right here, like it's somewhat flat and then it kind of just... Falls off. Falls off. So he, so he knows that to clean this up, he's at 4 thou here and then to get it clean and then we'll check the surface because we want the proper surface. That's real important. He's gonna take about six thou off the deck of that block. That's not so much that we've got to buy uh, D-stroke pistons or anything like that. We'll still be good on our compression. If we were gonna do more than that or something, uh, or the head had been done or the block had been done again, we could use a thicker head gasket to get the difference correct so we got the right compression ratio. There's all kinds of things we can do, but as a custom engine builder, it's up to us to make sure that we follow all those things to build the perfect motor, not just something that's been machined, you whip together and the things aren't right.
So I probed the first hole and I zeroed off that. And then we have a blueprint program uh, written based on the bore spacing um, spec of the block. So now it's probing each location. It's going to tell me how far off from the blueprint it is. If it's far enough off, I'll correct for it. If it's only, you know, a few thousands off, I'll just leave it and bore them where it is. So now we have these locations in here. And I have it set to show basically the difference from our blueprint program. And we're only a maximum of six thousandths of an inch off in the Y direction. Some of these cylinders are so close, they're within one ten thousandth of an inch. So I'm gonna leave them where they're at. They're close enough. Changing them's not really gonna benefit at all. They're, they're pretty, it's pretty good compared to the blueprint. So we'll set up our cutter and start boring these cylinders. I know you were thinking you needed to sleeve. This is cylinder six, right? Yeah, I or think it was cylinder. Uh, no, this is cylinder one. So I have the block flipped around. Oh, the oil cooler's here. Okay. Yep. So this is cylinder two had some damage to it. We bored it and everything cleaned up just fine. So. So did we take it to forty or? No. So this was just uh, a twenty pass. Well, technically, fifteen thousandths above standard. Okay. So it'll leave us a little room for honing. Okay. But this is a cut to prep us for honing to 20, 20 over and I don't see any damage anymore. Cool. And you, so you like to keep five thou for- For honing, yeah. For honing, okay, yep. good. That gives me enough enough room to, you know, straighten the bores out as best as possible and get my full surface finish in and everything, so. One thing talking with like Mark Malberg is if it's a little bit like bow shaped, a head gasket and stuff can kind of conform to that. But it's if it's choppy, like if it's really rigid, the head gasket can't seal to that. Yeah. So how do we prevent it from getting like those ridges in the uh, deck? We'll take our finish pass and we'll go at a different feed and speed to go really, really smooth. Okay. Um, to try to prevent any any cut marks and just be as, as close to perfectly smooth as possible. Okay. Part of it's also having a good machine that can, that's really sturdy and stable. Cool, all right, we'll, we'll see how it's done decking it. So I'm gonna set this just to take one quick pass at three thousandths and see how much it'll clean up. And then from there, we'll see how much more we need to deck to get it perfectly flat and fully resurfaced. So pretty much cleaned up the whole surface. So we're gonna take another pass at 2000s at a slower feed rate just to get a really nice surface finish. And before that, I'm gonna go around chamfer all the holes and edges so that there's no sharp edges after it's finished. So we took another two thousandths off for a finish pass. We went a little slower with that one just to get a really nice finish. 
came out really nice, have all our chamfered edges. Now we're gonna test the surface finish to make sure that it's correct for what we want for our gasket. Probe it just to be safe, make sure that my chamfer comes in perfectly. So we're just cutting a chamfer on the top. This is a 60 degree angle chamfer. This is just to aid the piston rings going in the hole when we go to final assembly. If we left a sharp edge there, it could catch the rings going in on insulation and it would mess up the piston rings. I gotta show you what kind of great guys I got here. Come in here. So this machine, 100,000 plus machine plus tool and you're 150 grand. Now I'm not bashing the company. I'm just saying we got a problem. So it comes, this bar locks in the, the block and holds it down while we're honing the block. Jesse here, my super smart head machinist, realizes that this doesn't really come down. Plus, you, it, it's all the way down. It's, it's laying as far as it's gonna go and it's not touching the main. So he 3D printed this little block that he can put in here now. Look at that. And it doesn't nick the main with the metal. Genius. So he's decked the block, he's bored the block, did that one cylinder, so we didn't we don't need to sleeve it and cleaned up? Nope, cleaned up good. Okay, we had this number two cylinder. Yeah, right here. This number two cylinder that was scored really bad. It actually had a nick in it, but it came out, so we don't need to sleeve it. He's already chamfered the block. Now he's just gonna hone it. I and mean, we'll check the cylinder wall. We'll show you that, what we're going for. Of course, we're gonna deck plate hone it. Now the reason we deck plate and hone, I've talked about it before, I'll talk about it again. What we're trying to do is, and, and let me show you here real quick. And we simulated as much as we possibly can. That's why we're actually putting a head gasket on here. We've got head gaskets for all different kinds of motors. Just old ones, you don't need a brand new one, but you need to be able to, to simulate the head gasket and the cylinder head being on there. And the reason you're doing that, as you, as you take that clamping load and you, you, you clamp these bolts to over 100 foot-pounds, you're pulling on the wall of that. Now, when I say the wall, the cylinder head bolts are right here. There's six of them around every cylinder. What that does when you're clamping that, it actually stretches the metal and it will deform the cylinder wall. It'll actually make that wall instead of round, perfectly round like you, it'll do this. So you want to simulate and hone the block in that condition. That's what the piston and the rings are going to be running in, in that loaded condition. That's why you do that. It's an extra add-on that uh, a lot of machine shops, I mean, this is just one cart of torque plates. There's, there's two other carts. Every engine basically needs to have that simulation. And we make sure we do that so you get the best product. see the distortion that takes place so since we just bored these cylinders they should be pretty close to perfectly straight the bore might not be perfect but once the torque plates on 
we see we have about five and a half thousandths to go at the very top. When we go to the middle, we have almost seven thousandths to go. So this is why we torque plate hone, as you can see, there's a lot of distortion going on throughout that cylinder. This profilometer, uh, what happens is the stylus, there's a little diamond, see it right there, that diamond drags across the surface of this, so this, this arm, it'll retract that arm, drags across the surface of this, and we can take a picture. The actual surface is not like right here at the top. The surface is kind of in, in the middle right there. So you have some peaks, and of course you have these are valleys. The valleys are designed to hold oil, to lubricate the cylinder wall, and if you look at our peaks, we really have all the peaks are basically a flat surface, but this is at a micron scale, so you can actually see what's going on in each one of those little surface textures that you see here. We also show that we have a 50 degree crosshatch pattern on it. Kind of like a compilation of what the surface is, and that's usually, the RK is what most everybody wants to go for. Just the picture alone kind of tells you a, a, a big story. Yeah. I mean, you could you could end up with these same values, and your picture might look entirely different. Really? Yeah. I've had it happen, you know, even talking to Mark Malberg, um, huh. he always said to look a lot at the picture, not so much. Obviously, your values will matter to an extent, but your picture tells tells a big story. Well, they too. do tell a great story here. Yeah, and you, the story is I've got I've having got like a nice thick. Kind of surface area. Surface area, and then you have like your faint, deep valleys coming yeah. off of that. Yeah. Awesome. So this should break. This is a cylinder wall that'll break in pretty quick and really nice to. Pretty have. quick, like within 10 miles. Oh, Just yeah. One, one, no one or two good poles, you're done. Yeah. Okay, so that's our picture of uh, the cylinder wall. We've done all our machine work on this block. It's ready for uh, a, a pre-assembly. We call that the final wash and inspection and then we'll paint it and uh, we'll get to assembling it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching all that machine work. We'll get it cleaned up, painted, uh, get it built for the customer and get it shipped out back to him and he can get his truck up and running. I'm excited.